Campus ministry is a place for students, and they're not all young adults, most of them are, uh, for students to wrestle with their spiritual questions in the midst of vocational discernment. It's a, it's a place, a community that's welcoming to people who are wrestling with those kinds of questions. It's a place where a very, very large university of 42,000 people gets smaller. And it gets smaller because students get invested in the people of a ministry, in the place, and they feel safe, and they feel as though they can be who they are. But I think there's a gap between what people in the pews know or, or even think about campus ministry and all the rich opportunities that uh, campus ministers are able to open up and, um, and work with. It's, it's a, a place to have an impact that you can't have at the parish level. At the parish level, most people stay in that community or they move to another community, but the people in a university setting or a college setting are going to disperse over vast geography. And their working lives you know, and their living lives are much longer than the average lifespan of people in a parish. Um, so simply thinking about the multiplicative effects of investment in a campus ministry, it's radically different. The college years, the university years, are so important in the, in the lives of the young people who are studying. And providing a safe place for, for them to explore how faith can inform the ways that they have an impact on their world uh, is, a, is an especially important ministry. And this is a very safe environment to share those and to be blatantly honest about whatever you're going through with your life and be able to get the help and support that you need in a very small setting um, rather than going to a large parish where sometimes you can feel like just one in a, in a lot, you know, and not always get that one-on-one -on -one with, you know, whoever's presiding that Sunday. This is for far from what I've seen. I think if you're going through any trials and tribulations and you're a Purdue student, this is the place to be at. You know, a lot of us, we need guidance. Some of us need guidance. So, you know, this is a place to come for guidance. Definitely if you're going through a difficult time in life right now. And I have work too, I have a job. I work um, three nights a week and I come here and they, we hang out for a while. They even give me a free meal. I mean, <laughs> that's a great deal. Um, helps, helps take away Helps take away a lot of uh, a lot of things that aren't really that important. gives you gives you a couple three hours just to sit around and and have a good conversation with some friends and just um, just relax on a, on a Sunday afternoon. I've talked with many of you over the years how what we want to foster is a reasonable Christianity. So please bring your minds to church. It just is is important, I think, for them to know in college that the Christianity they grew up with is not the only expression of Christianity that they're going to find. Uh, we welcome that and we, we don't seek to dictate to students, you know, oh, you should, you know, keep your beliefs, you, you know, you shouldn't change. Um, like college and university education is a time to learn and encounter new ideas, uh, campus ministry can foster that and, and welcome that because I think it strengthens faith. So I, th I think it's really important for them to see that you can have your faith and keep your brains as well. If, if someone says to you, you are dumb as a post for believing that there's a God, you have to be able to do more than just say, no, I'm not. Uh, so the ability to say something about uh, the depth of human experience, how that leads to the transcendent is a good thing. I was able to transition really from um, just being a self-proclaimed atheist to going, well, maybe there is more to something. And, uh, um, and I had to find the right campus ministry for me to get involved with. But that was, that was one of those reasons is I, I found it welcoming. Um, they were open to 
um, a lot of different ideas, a lot of different viewpoints, and it wasn't, um, it wasn't just kind of one way or the highway. I think that the value of interfaith work is very strong at this age. I think that um, building those relationships now, building relationships where Lutheran and Episcopalian and any other Christian students have more interaction with Jewish, Muslim, Buddhist, Baha'i, Earth-based religion, Unitarian, to have those interactions now and to break down those barriers, the, those barriers of ignorance, those, those barriers of um, maybe some preconceived notions or prejudice, to do that now is only going to be benefit the whole world, not just the church, the whole world, all of God's creation. And it's important to never separate ourselves because of differences. It's We should acknowledge our differences and understand how that can strengthen our relationships and our friendships and in turn strengthen our community. So without interfaith collaboration, we've got people of different religions with the same ideologies, just completely separated from one another, and our community grows weaker. Our, our dear friend, the Dalai Lama, you know, says, uh, be religious, pick one. <laughs> you know, if you're going to be a, you know, if you're a Christian, be a good Christian. If, if you're a Buddhist, be a good Buddhist. If you're a Muslim, be a good Muslim. If, if, the, if we were all supporting each other, in being faithful in the, in the path that we have chosen to walk, each of our groups, the, the, the world will be a completely different place. It will more closely resemble, I think, the kingdom that Jesus preached. A mobile food pantry, it's about 5,000 pounds of food, which is enough for 140 households. Today we have chicken nuggets, frozen eggs, cheese, boiled eggs, green beans, there's also stewed tomatoes, pudding cups, pop secret popcorn, chips, little snacks for the children, fresh bread, sweets, and even fresh potatoes. Our last item is laundry soap, which we actually make at Food Finders. It looks a lot like lemonade, so we always warn the clients. It's good for about three to four loads. What the Bible is teaching you isn't meant to be done inside the church building. You're supposed to, you, you learn these lessons and you um, know sort of the influence and the impact that you can have to help other people and do things for others. And you can't do that standing still in a building. You have to get out there and be in your community and be able to actually apply the lessons, which I think having a campus ministry lets us do. And they don't want to talk about Jesus anymore. They don't want to talk about what Jesus said to do. They want to do it. They don't want you to tell them um, why we should come to church. They want to see why we should be the church. Basically, we are packing bags and putting items in there, like the toilet tissue, the paper towels, the dishwashing liquid, um, and some like soap. So there are a lot of needy families in the community that are on food stamps. And food stamps is great. It covers you know the cost of food. Um, however, it doesn't cover the cost of other non-food necessities such as toilet paper, soap, shampoo, dishwash detergent, everything you know diapers, everything that you need, but is not covered by food stamps. The students refer to the people of the town as townies, and there's this like really negative relationship between. Um, the students of Depa and the town's people because of the extreme difference in background and social class. Um, so I, I've always been really uncomfortable with that relationship and I've wanted to change it as well as serve the community in any way I could. So here I am. Some people look at it very much as like, oh, I'm like giving to others, and so it's kind of like a top-down thing. But it's not. Like these are these are our neighbors, these are our friends, these are people you live and work with and interact with, and um, it's important to see them as neighbors, not as like it's not like an us versus them. And so that's one insight that I picked up that I, I really like and try to like apply that to the rest of my life.
For many years, decades, many decades, uh, campus ministry has been a place where leaders uh, emerge because people who know who they are and have wrestled deeply enough with their faith to understand the, their relationship to God at a deeper level emerge as leaders. They're change agents. Uh, they understand that the world is not yet the way it's supposed to be and therefore something needs to change. I think it's where our next generation of leaders will come from. Uh, I think it's where a lot of our clergy is going to come from, uh, especially if we're looking for a clergy younger than me, <laughs> so, uh, who could put in a few more years. And we seem to share this passion as, as young adults and as and college students of wanting to do, wanting to uh, move the church forward to, to uh, to be a presence, to be a presence in, uh, in the world. So students um, play a variety of leadership roles at Good Shepherd, including serving on the vestry. Peter has joked that you know, do, doing church in general is like herding cats, and that uh, uh, doing a vestry that is half students, half non-students is kind of like uh, simultaneously herding indoor cats and outdoor cats. Uh, but. Uh, there, there is a richness and, and, a, and a wonderful chemistry that comes out of that with, by having uh, uh, different generations working together. You don't see that in a lot of places. The gifts regular at 53 percent, but Mark and I looked at... The Being the church treasurer is actually pretty awesome. I am a senior in college and back home the treasurer the treasure has always been a person who's retired and that's normally been his profession profession and the vestry is um, pretty big deal back home they don't really have any students I think the youngest person on vestry is like 45 so coming to a church where the vestry is mostly college kids it's a big difference think about what emerging church looks like um, those people who are engaged in campus ministry are often open enough to help invite the community into structures or forms of community that look significantly different than the ones we already know. All of those are beginning to teach the wider church about how to gather community that doesn't simply expect people to come through the beautiful red doors on Sunday morning. If we want a future in this church, we need to strengthen campus ministries, not cut them. The people that, that we really need to keep inviting into our churches and into our sacramental life are the people who are most ready to leave altogether. I think this is really how the Episcopal Church keeps renewing itself in every generation. and. If we slight campus ministry, we are in danger of losing that altogether. I cannot imagine my five years of college without it. Um, I've dealt with the divorce of my parents during this time. And without this resource here, I don't know that I would have gotten through it as smoothly and with as much peace. Uh, as languages change, as cultures change, we are the ones who are asked by God in God's church to mark out the grace to be found in the transition of the ages. Uh, we are in that place where the ages are pushed to change. We are in that place uh, where the university will create the new uh, technology of the age ahead, will make uh, value for the people who are in uh, educational positions uh, and for their students. So if you want us to continue to work like St. Paul uh, at the edge of the age, and then you need us to be at a place where that future is being made. Uh, campus ministries are an investment, not just in the future, but in the present, and they are going to help transform this church into something that looks far more faithful <laughs> than, than you might expect. And they're a place to encourage people to grow by asking those radical questions, those deep-rooted questions that impact every single human being.